for speaking to all of our hearts. Thank you for making changes wherever changes are needed in, in all of us. Lord, we're, we're willing to be changed. We're willing to be transformed uh, by the potter's hands. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Holy Spirit, you have freedom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the title tonight, and Brother Fred, I'll give it to you again, but it is about being a friend of God. And this is something that is extremely important as we grow in the Lord and as we increase in the knowledge of the Lord that we become a friend of his. And that's closer than a servant. It's closer than uh, just a believer. Uh, but it is because every believer is not a friend, uh, but a friend speaks of a commitment and it speaks of an everlasting relationship. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Well, that was a good introduction. We are talking about a friend of God tonight. I hope that we all desire to be a friend of God. Uh, one of the things that we see, if you are a friend of God, you know what's in his heart. You know what he wants to do in your life and in the life of your family, and then in the life of your city, uh, because that's what a friend, uh, having a friend is all about. It's about sharing things. Another thing about uh, friendship is that uh, you base friendship on mutual interests. Uh, for mm -hmm. example, I was raised in West Texas, and there were no uh, rivers or uh, lakes around me, so I never uh, became a fisherman. I was a hunter, uh, as a young boy, uh, we uh, did hunt a lot, uh, but not fishing. And so if a person came up to me today and said, I want you to be my fishing buddy, uh, I want us to be real good friends and I want, us, I want you to, we'll be fishing buddies. Well, I think I just don't have an interest in that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we have to think about what are God's interests? Well, first of all, we know he's spirit and he is eternal. And so let's focus on him. Uh, if we want to be his friend, we have to focus on things that we have in mutual, uh, mutually, uh, in mutual interest. And those would be, uh, he's a spirit. We need to be spiritual. Uh, Amen. You can't be carnal and be a friend of God. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to be, you've got to have, where can we connect together? Another thing, he is eternal, mm -hmm. and we can't just have put our focus on carnal things, on natural things, on temporary mm -hmm. things, right. and think we're going to be a friend of God. He is eternal, so we need to put our uh, thoughts uh, and interests on eternal things, mm -hmm. and uh, it's important for us to focus on eternal things. Well, what are eternal things? Well, they're the things like love, joy, and peace, uh, hallelujah. hallelujah, and the uh, things of the Spirit and God's kingdom. Uh, the things on this earth are going to pass away. They're temporary. And that's not what God is most interested in. He's a spirit. He's eternal. We need to remember that. We need to connect with him. If you want to be a friend, and, and it is important to be a friend, uh, and, and it, of course, the whole story about friendship with God begins in the Old Testament, but it continues on into the New Testament. It continues mm -hmm. on uh, in this pre present day. And so, do you want to be his friend? Well, I'm going to show you how uh, to be his friend. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look uh, at, at Luke. Uh, the disciples came to Jesus in Luke chapter 11 and said, teach us how to pray, because they, they knew he could pray. He was very effective. Mm -hmm. So they asked him to teach them how to pray. Now, right there in the next few verses, this is Luke 11, that was Luke uh, verse 1, but then in Luke uh, 11 verses 2 through 4, he says, pray to your father. And we're all very familiar with that. That's the uh, call the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but uh, remember, he never sinned, and so 
Uh, there was a part where we asked for forgiveness of sin, so probably calling it the Lord's Prayer is not a real good explanation of what it is. But he, nonetheless, he said, pray to your Father. But in verse 5, he changes, and mm -hmm. he gives us a different way to pray. And he pray, said, you can pray to your friend. Now, when you pray to your friend, which is also God, God, your friend. When you pray to God, the friend, it's not just about you. See, if you have needs and uh, desires and mm -hmm. petitions you want to bring before God, you bring them to as a child of the Father, God the Father. But if you have uh, loved ones around you that you're concerned about and they're going astray, they're uh, not doing what they uh, need to do, then you pray to God the friend. Uh, and, and so you have to be a friend in order to pray to God the friend. And so that's the verses uh, 5 through 8. And, and so it's a way that we can do that and pray. And that's a, a level of intercession. We're interceding mm -hmm. for people there. Well, we all have loved ones that need uh, that need the Lord. And so we need to intercede for them. And we need to have friendship with our Father, uh, with God, so that we can be an intercessor and bring our loved ones to him and say, these people need to be born again or these people are sick and they need to be healed or whatever the situation is. We're interceding for other people. We're praying to our friend. We know that we have friendship with him. And so first you establish that friendship by being concerned about what he's concerned with. And then you can bring uh, and bring loved ones to him in your intercession. Okay. But also the Old Testament talks a lot about you come into the counsel of the Lord. And so this is really about praying to our friend and having that relationship with him. And that counsel of the Lord, see, we stand with him and we consult with one another. And we're going to see some real important examples of this with Abraham and Moses in a few moments. But that's the idea that we come into his counsel. Uh, and so we, we consult with one another. He tells us what's in his heart. We tell him what's in our heart. And we may even go back and forth. Uh, so in, that's in the counsel of the Lord. Jeremiah talks about it in Jeremiah 23, uh, verses 18 and 22. He said, who has stood in the counsel of the Lord mm -hmm. and seen his word and heard his word? Now, that's a really interesting yeah. uh, question there, because have you seen his word? I believe what it's really talking about there is seeing his word in action. You, you see his word in action. Not only hear it, but you see it in action. It, it's not just a, a, a dead letter on the page, but it's a living word that, that rises up. I believe that's when you see the word, you see it in, in action. Now it says those people, and this is verse 22, says those people who stand in the counsel of the Lord, they're going to know what to say to other people. They're going to hear uh, what the, they need to say, and they're going to speak his word and people are going to be turned from their evil ways. Mm -hmm. So why do you want to be a friend of God? Mm -hmm. you, you want your words to be effective. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to turn people uh, when they're going the wrong way. You want to turn them so that they go to God and, Amen. and, and Amen. come back to God. And that, that may be friends or uh, uh, loved ones or uh, companions, people around us or work, people we work with or just people out on the street. You need to have your words effective. And the way that you get your words effective to actually touch their lives, to impact their lives, that you need to stand in the counsel of the Lord. And you're invited to be there in his presence if you are his friend. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Uh, okay, so I want to give you some background for it. We're not going to cover a lot of these verses, but I just want to give you a background because Abraham is our example. He's mm. the father of our faith. But he is also labeled in this, uh, carries on into the New Testament as a friend, friend of, God. of God. So he is an example to us. And so how did he become a friend of God? And James tells it, but I'm going to just give you the background for it. In Genesis 15, God makes a covenant with Abraham. His name was Abram at that time, but uh, uh, 
uh, I, I would just use the word Abraham. So he made a covenant with Abraham and he promised the land uh, to his descendants, uh, uh, a large uh, land uh, to his descendants. That's basically the promise. And there was a covenant between them. Now that covenant, once you enter into a covenant with God, it, it renounces your right uh, to your life. You, you just give it all to him. And everything you have, you give to him. So if he needs something or wants something that's yours, you give it to him. But if you have that commitment to God, he also has a similar commitment to you. Mm -hmm. If you have a little commitment to God, God has a little commitment to you. But if you have a full commitment, mm -hmm. uh, then he's going to be fully committed to you. So you come to him and you need to have a need, then he will meet it. So that's what covenant friends are about covenant partners covenant friends all of a sudden whatever i have if, if i've entered mm -hmm. into an agreement a covenant agreement with you whatever i have i'm willing to give to you and that means you, whatever you have you're willing to give to me okay so that was genesis 15 and we go a little bit further uh one of the things that god had promised him he would have a son and that son became isaac and and, mm -hmm. and in Isaac, all of the descendants for Abraham were counted in that line from Isaac. And so the promise that God made to Abraham was related to Isaac and his descendants. Okay, but then in Genesis 22, something really important happens. And God says, I want your son. Oh, well, mm -hmm. if you're in covenant, see, you're not denied what God wanted. It, and Abraham was in covenant with him. And God said, I want your son now. I want mm -hmm. Isaac. I want you to go to the mountain. I'll show you. And I want you to sacrifice your son. Now he's the one carrying the seed for the descendants uh, that God has promised Abraham. Oh, it's a very significant thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, but Abraham, you might say, well, I, I don't want to sacrifice my son. But see, they're in covenant. They're in a covenant agreement, and this is a test whether or not Abraham was going to be fully committed to God. And so Abraham said, okay, I'm going to come. We're going to, I'm going to take Isaac, and we're going to go up on the mountain. And so he took some servants, and he had fire, and he had uh, different kinds of things. But uh, so they got so far, and then Abraham said to the servants, okay, you stay here. Because you've got to separate yourself from the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. So Abraham and Isaac, he said, we're going to go to the mountain. We're going to worship God and we're going to return. Oh, no yeah. wonder. No wonder he's called the father of our faith. That's mm -hmm. a lot of faith. God said, I want you to sacrifice your son. I want your son. And because we're in covenant then, he was willing to sacrifice his son. So they went up there on the mountain and... Uh, Isaac looks around and he said, well, I see the fire, I see the wood, I see all of this and the altar and all, but where is the sacrifice? And uh, Abraham said, well, God will we'll provide, provide himself, himself a sacrifice. And, and uh, so this is a test of Abraham, but it's also a test of Isaac because uh, Abraham's over a hundred years of age and Isaac is only, uh, let's say around 20 something. Uh, a young man, so he could easily have uh, run away from his father or he, he could have uh, uh, out-wrestled him. He could have refused to be sacrificed, but no, he's willing to be sacrificed. So Abraham tied him up, put him on the altar, and she wanted to sacrifice him on the wood. And, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, God said, okay. Look in the bush. Look in the bush. There is the ram. So there was a Okay, so God was testing Abraham whether or not he had a full commitment to it. And praise God that Abraham was fully committed I mean, to God. Yeah, I mean, because that meant that God was fully committed, committed to, to Abraham and his descendants. And you and I are in Amen. there now Amen. because we're in the family of God. And, and so then later, a couple of thousand years later, uh, God was willing to give his only begotten son uh, because Abraham had offered his son. So they were in covenant. And so the same commitment that Abraham had to God, God had to Abraham and his descendants, which now is you and me uh, and 
hundreds and thousands and millions of people uh, because he sent the best he had. He sent his only begotten mm -hmm. son. And it was all about the covenant between God and Abraham. Hallelujah. And, and then that's the reason Abraham is called a friend of God. It's because he was fully committed to God mm -hmm. and he refused nothing from his friend God. Oh, when, when his friend God said, I want your son, Abraham said, oh, I'm going to do it. My son and I, we're going to go on the mountain. Mm -hmm. We're going to worship God. But God had said, I want him to sacrifice on that mountain. But now this is all summarized in James chapter 2, verses 21 through 23. And this covenant is the reason that he was the friend of God. It was that covenant commitment. So I want you to read these three verses in James chapter 2. This explains why Abraham was a friend of God. It says, was our father Abraham not justified by works? when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar. You see that faith was working with his works. As a result of the works, faith was perfected. Hallelujah. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and Abraham believed God, and it was accredited to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Okay. So how does this apply to you and me? It means we need to be fully committed to God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 He may never ask us to sacrifice a son. Probably not because we don't have blood sacrifices in this day. Uh, but we know that that was the example. And it's an example of fully being committed to God. And that's what we get out of this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. out of this message. The bottom line is to be his friend, we have to be fully committed, committed to him. Now, let's move it into the New Testament. And Jesus said in John 15, I'm going to just say this first, but then I want you to read it. In John 15, 15, verse 15, he said, uh, you're no longer a slave. I don't call you a slave anymore. Don't call you a servant anymore because you don't know uh, what, what I'm doing. You don't know what the Father's doing. You just don't know these things, but I call you a friend. Okay, mm. so what that is, it's an invitation for us to be a friend of Jesus, Ooh, a, a friend of God. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. But we, we can't skip the two verses before that because it, mm. show, it says we're going to have to be fully committed to him. To be the friend of Jesus, we have to be fully committed to him. So I'd like for you to read, start with John 15 and verses 13, 14, and 15. That's Greater right. love has no one than this, <clears throat> that a person will lay down his or her life for his friends. Oh. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Oh, hallelujah. No longer do I call you slaves. For a slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends because all things that I have heard from my father, I have made them known unto you. Okay, so what this is saying, this is still full commitment. See, greater love has no man than he lay down his life. So that's what Abraham did. Abraham laid it all down, his dream was all wrapped up in Isaac, and he laid it all down on the altar. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do as well. That's what Jesus did. He went to the cross. He laid it all down. But that has implications for you and me. In order for us to be Jesus's friend and the friend of God, we have to be willing to lay everything down, lay our dreams down, lay our relationships and lay everything down at the feet of mm -hmm. Jesus, fully committed to Jesus. And the other verse, and that was uh, verse 14 says, we need to do his will. We're not going to be a friend of Jesus unless we do his commandments. And so if we're going to bring the will of God on the earth and, and the kingdom of God on the earth, then we have to be fully committed 
to his plan and, and, and do what he tells us to do. And then we are his friend. So it's the same commitment that Abraham had, a full commitment. So if you want to be a friend of God, it requires a full commitment. It goes on over into the New Testament. You mm -hmm. see, we followed this concept into the New Testament in John chapter 15. To be a friend of God, we have to be fully committed mm -hmm. to him, to lay down our life for him, to lay down all of our agendas and our interests for him, to do his commandments, and then we are friends. It's the same requirement from Old Testament through the New Testament mm -hmm. to be the friend of God, it requires full commitment. So I want to ask you today, are you fully committed uh, to God? Now, let's let's look at a, a couple of other things, how to actually see this. And let's look at 1 John uh, 1 verse 3. And this talks about if we're fully committed, then we're going to find out that we have fellowship with the Father and the Son, mm -hmm. and, and we're going to have everything in common. Now, that's really good because that mm -hmm. means we have everything that he has. We have access to everything mm -hmm. that God has if we are his friend mm -hmm. and have this fellowship. Okay, so read this verse, Jerry. First John 1, 3. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you as well, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed, our fellowship, now remember this is John the Beloved speaking, is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, Jesus said something really important in um, J John 17, verse 10. He's talking to the Father and he said, what I have is mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. All that I have is yours. All you have is it's mine. mine. Okay, so that's the same thing here John is writing about in 1 John 1, 3, that we have fellowship. Now, and that word is, it means everything in common. We have everything in common. Mm -hmm. So what is mine belongs to Jesus. What is mine belongs to the Father. But what they have belongs to me. See, if, I, if I'm fully committed. So this message, mm. well, we're going to cover a lot of ground, but it's very simple. Mm. Are you committed? So to be a friend of God, you have to be fully committed. Oh, hallelujah. Now, and I believe that that also means fully able to give everything to him. That means uh, everything that is that that has bothered us or, or troubled us. Uh, we're going to give everything to him. We're, we're going to give uh, uh, love to him. We're going to give our joy to him. We're going to give our worship to him. But also we're going to give uh, the other things to him that that he will take and destroy. Okay. So I want us to move on to Luke 14. Uh, I believe it's verse 33, and I believe Sherry has this to read. Luke, this is something Jesus said to all of us. Read Luke 14. 33. So then none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all of his possessions. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! You don't say, oh, I'm a disciple, but I, I hold on to everything. Mm, I, mm, I, mm, I, mm. I grab things. I, I hoard of things. I, mm -hmm. I, I, no, if you want to be his disciple. Says you cannot say you're my disciple if mm -hmm. you're not willing to give, give up, up all of your possessions. And, and and see, you might say, well, uh, Freddie and Sherry, have you ever uh, done that? Yes, there was a time uh, Sherry and I mm -hmm. were in a meeting, uh, a large meeting, and we we had just gotten a, a big uh, a financial blessing, and uh, uh, the Lord told us to give it all. Uh, yeah. to the ministry, to that ministry that we were in. So we wrote a check for the whole amount, all the money we had. Have you ever gotten to that point? Mm -hmm. See, this verse is really important. You cannot say you are my disciple if you're not willing to give up all of your possessions. And, and we were tested on it. That happened to us Yeah. Well, because we just had a big financial blessing come in, a lot of money come into us. And then the Lord asked for it all back. And so we wrote a check mm -hmm. right there. 
uh, and we gave it. And I'm glad to this Amen. day that we I'm, did. We gave it all. We gave it all we had, Amen. all the money we had. We gave it away uh, to the ministry, to the kingdom. And glory to God, that was the test. That was a test mm -hmm. for us. I don't know if you've ever been tested, but we've been tested. Yeah. We've been tested a lot. But there it was in that service. We gave all we had. And Jesus said in John, in Luke 14, 33, you cannot call yourself my disciple if you don't, if you're not willing to give it all mm -hmm. up, Amen. all your possessions. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like hallelujah. I say, this is a simple message. It's a simple uh, truth to that, but it's a profound truth. Amen. If you want to be God's friend, mm -hmm. you've mm -hmm. got to be willing to give it all up. Whatever he mm -hmm. wants, you give it to him. That's the way Abraham was. Amen. You want Amen. anything I have, you can have it. That's what Abraham said. Uh, whatever you want, you if you want it. And he said, I want your son. I want you to sacrifice mm -hmm. your son. Okay, well, oh, I'm going to do it. I, well, we're going to come. And I'm going to go up to that mountain and Indeed. I'm going to sacrifice my son. Well, it's mind boggling, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, but that's what it takes to be a friend. Now, that doesn't mean that you sacrifice your children. Uh, what it means is in your heart, you're willing to give it up. And what he asks you for, you give it to him. If if he wants your time, if he wants you to get up in the middle of the night and pray, if he wants you to pray for somebody, if he wants you to go on a trip and go someplace to witness to somebody, you, you have to be willing to do those things. When he's asking you to do things, you need to be quick to do them. That's what a friend will do. If he says, I want you to do this thing for me, oh, you've got yeah. to say, here I am, Lord. That's send what I, me. That, that's what Isaiah said in Isaiah 6. I, here I am, send me. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That, that needs to be our the cry of our heart. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want, Lord, here I am, send me. Yes. I'm ready to go. You know, there's a lot of people uh, that, that need to be sent out, but, but they're, they're reluctant to go. Uh, the mm -hmm. world is out there crying, for God's people, his friends to come out and help the world, the people out there in the world. But a lot of people are not willing to go. They're not willing to uh, to go where God is sending them. See, if you're willing to go, God will send you. Uh, we're going to be going just to ministry uh, in tomorrow, I guess. We'll start yeah, on our yeah. journey yeah. to go to Texas to minister. And, and then in the next few weeks, we'll be in... Uh, uh, New Mexico to minister, and then Florida to minister, and we'll have two trips uh, to Mexico, and we're planning uh, a trip to Peru because we're willing to go. But God knows our heart is willing to go. If he wants to send us, uh, we're willing to go, and so he, he sends us. Now, he, he knows your heart. See, God looks at the heart. And, and so you, you've got to make a full commitment. I want you to think seriously about this a message today because it has mm -hmm. obviously it has a place we're going and, and, and are you going to make a commitment to him are you going to make a full commitment are you going to hold back some things you know that's the way Saul mm -hmm. was uh, he held back King, yeah, Saul, King Saul King Saul held back some things yes God told God told him through uh, Samuel mm -hmm. to go out and, and kill all of these enemies and, and kill all of their livestock and but, and, and Saul went out there and boy, he killed a bunch of people and killed them, but he kept the best. Yeah. <laughs> All the, the, Even the king of the people. He, he, he didn't kill the king and he, mm. he didn't kill the leaders and he didn't kill the, the good looking oxen and the good looking sheep mm -hmm. and the, all of these things. He, he didn't keep what was, he, he didn't kill what was good. Uh, he, he kept all of that back. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. See, there's so many people that keep back some things in their heart. Oh, I, I want to keep doing that. When God's saying, give it all up, give it all up. Oh, no, mm -hmm. I want to keep some uh, of the really things that I enjoy doing. I want to keep doing those things. But he said, I want a full commitment. You're not my disciple. You cannot call yourself my disciple if you're not fully committed. If you don't give up, if you're not willing to give up all of your possessions. Now, this is important. Uh, 
I, I want to give you two examples then, and I mentioned them earlier. And, and that is, if you're a friend of God, God will reveal to you his plans for you and your family and your city. And that's exactly what he did for Abraham. Amen. See, Amen. We're now we're back to Genesis 18, and, and Abraham was God's friend. And, Abraham, and God had come down with some of his angels, and they were going to destroy Sodom. But God said, oh, I can't withhold this. I can't, mm, yeah. I can't go by, go down there and destroy Sodom without coming here and revealing my plans to Abraham. That's right. He said that in Genesis 18. Okay. And, and so he said, I, I, I've heard the cries uh, of Sodom and I'm going down there to, to destroy it. But, but I've got to reveal that to my friend, Abraham. Abraham. Don't you want to be like that? And that's somebody, somebody that stood then in the counsel of the Lord because they consulted with one another. And, and Abraham even negotiated with, Lord, with the Lord. He said, well, but what if we find 50 people uh, that are righteous in the sea? Would mm -hmm. you destroy it? And then he, he goes down and let's mm -hmm. go down to 40. Or, what if there's 40? Will you destroy it? Or, or 50? Or or, 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 I mean, 40 or, or 10. 30 or 20, or, and they finally got down to 10. And, and so that's what I mean by standing in the counsel of the Lord, that you're there, you're consulting with him. He's telling you his plans. You're telling him uh, what you would like and, and negotiating with him and, and, and consulting with one another. This is not, you're not a robot. God wants you to be a friend mm -hmm. so that he can share his heart with you Hallelujah. With Hallelujah. about your family, about you, about your city. Yes. He wants to share his heart with you. And if you're his friend, he will allow you, he will invite you into the counsel of the Lord and y'all will consult with one another. Mm, uh, hallelujah. If you're his friend. Now, what is the requirement? Full Commitment. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said it hallelujah. best. He said, you cannot call yourself a disciple if you're not willing to give up all of your possessions. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, it's easy for us to go, oh, I'm a disciple. I'm a disciple of Jesus. But are you really? Are you willing to give up all you possess? Willing to give mm -hmm. up your spouse and your children and, and your home and your property and your Automobile. Are you willing to give up? Give it all up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the test. Amen. That's the litmus Amen. test Amen. to see whether or not you're really a friend of God. Now, there's another example I want to, to give, and that is Moses. And again, we're not going to read all the verses, but this is Exodus 32 and 33. And uh, God and Moses are up on the up on the hill, up on the mountain. And, uh, and so God is giving a the uh, Ten Commandments to Moses, and then all of a sudden, uh, the people down there they uh, they, they they were frustrated, frustrated. because because uh, Moses we don't even know where he is is he still alive he's been gone for days and we don't know if he's even still alive and so let's have a golden calf let's we'll tell people the golden calf brought, brought us, us out, out of Egypt. Out of <laughs> Egypt. Oh, hallelujah, how ridiculous. And so they were worshiping the golden calf. Aaron had made it. And so uh, this is what God said to, um, to Moses. He said, your people mm -hmm. that you brought out of Egypt mm -hmm. are down there. They're doing evil. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to kill them. And then Moses, <laughs> see, he's standing in the council of the Lord. They're beginning to share their hearts with each other, God and Moses. Because Moses was his friend. I might not uh, know a particular verse, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. He does say that. That, yeah. that he was a friend of God. And, the, and, and God's sharing his uh, heart with Moses. And Moses is sharing his heart with God. And, and Moses comes back and negotiates with him and says, You cannot kill these people. These are your people you brought out of <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> God was trying to say, these are your, your people, people that you brought out of Egypt, <laughs> uh, Moses. And Moses said, no, these are your people, God. And these are the people that you brought out of Egypt and you cannot kill them. 
because if you kill them, then the Egyptians will say, well, he could, God could take the people out of Egypt, but he couldn't take them into the promised land. So Moses is contending. He, they're consulting back and forth and, and say, and so God said, okay, okay, I, I won't kill them then. And, and I'll let you go and I'll let you lead them into uh, the promised land, but I'm not, not going to go, go with, you. with you. Not in my presence. I'm I'm just going to send an angel with you. Now you get all the promises. You get everything I promised you, but I my presence is not going with you. Well, here's a friend of God, oh, Moses, and he says, if you don't oh, go, God. if your presence doesn't go, I don't want to go either. Mm -hmm. Woo, hallelujah. Let me say I that will again. Not go. If your presence doesn't go with us, I'm not going to go. No. Because, see, if you're a friend of God, you're more concerned about his presence, presence being, being with, with you, you than, than with the promises. promises. A lot of people are just... Woo, say it again. Say it again. They're just concerned about the promises. Hallelujah. But if you're a friend of God, you're more concerned about his presence, presence. being with you than receiving the promises that he's made to you. But that's not everybody. There's a lot of people that want the promises. They want the good things. They want the blessings of God but they don't want him. They don't want God. They don't want the presence of God in their life. Uh, and they have to yield to him and submit to him. They don't want that. They just want his blessings and they mm. want his promises. So where are you today? Mm. Well, what is your commitment to God? Are, uh, do you have a little commitment to God? Or are you fully committed? Fully committed. Oh, hallelujah. I, I want to make a statement today that I am fully committed to God, fully committed. and Sherry is fully committed to Amen. God, and, and that's the reason he sends us around the world uh, to minister, because he knows we're fully committed, and when he had, and has a need to go, for someone to go, here we are, we're willing, Amen. willing to go, and ready to go, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. it doesn't take, a, take us long to pack our bags, we're well, we're going to pack our bags in the morning and, and we stay, go stay to, ready. Go there. Our, our bags are, are right up here behind my back a few feet. Um, but it doesn't take us long to pack and we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we'll mm -hmm. be on the road again. And, and so the question is, what is your commitment to God? If you're fully committed to him, that's the same measure he's going to be committed to you. Whatever I'm commitment there. you have to him, that's the measurement of the commitment that he has of you. Mm, if you're fully mm, committed to him. You're, he's fully committed to you. And whatever belongs to him, he's willing to give to you. But see, it starts with what is mine belongs to you. That's what Jesus said. All that is well, mine yeah, all that is, is mine. yours. And then he could say, all that is yours is mine. That's John mm, 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 17, mm. 10. You might mm. want to look that verse up. That's the way it is. Mm. That's the way we have to do it today. It doesn't start with getting all of the blessings first. It, may, it starts with the commitment. All that is mine belongs to you, God. All that is mine, I give to you. And that's what Jesus said. Hallelujah. If we're going to call ourselves a disciple, Hallelujah. that means that we are willing to give it all up, everything Amen. we possess. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here today. Amen. Amen. 